Father God, we love you. We give you praise. We give you honor. We give you worship. We thank you for another time that you've allowed us to come into this place. Speak through us. Think through us. None of me, not all of you. We declare that your people are anointed to hear. And that everybody will hear something specifically for their situation. Bless us, God. In this time, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Uh, Acts, Acts 1 and, and 8 is our anchor scripture on this series called Willpower. And it says, uh, and ye shall receive power. And after that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And it talks about being a witness. And we've been uh, talking about uh, the will of God being exerted. It's one thing, you know, uh, to be offended. And you, and you start, you know, walking and then you have this extra boost of, a, of power when somebody piss you off or somebody make you mad. You all of a sudden got this power like and this focus to get certain things done. You know, it's one thing to have that type of power access through anger. But the Bible says faith worketh by love. And so the scripture, Ephesians 3.20 says, Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all you can ask or think according to the, the, there's that word again the power that worketh in you so there's a storage of power that that's going to work your faith on a whole nother level not necessarily power that says that you have to be offended of anything or but it's just power in your words the bible says uh the power of life and death is in the tongue and those that love it will eat the fruit thereof so the power in what you say and the conviction to not change your mind about what you say it will work i don't care what y'all say it will happen in jesus name that power exerted that conviction in your words and so we've been discussing power and now i want to talk about another part of this power that we have a a, a power that we can produce miracles more easily than we think. Man, I'm telling you, if you got um, something or uh, 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 some money and, and you know somebody need it, you, if you walk that money up to them and they didn't ask for it, that's a miracle to them. All right? You're exerting power through love. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. What does that mean? These people didn't deserve what I gave them. So I exerted a certain amount of power to bless them. Why? Because they couldn't give me anything back in return. All right? And so there, there has to be a power there. You know, most of the times when we give, we expect something back, some type of exchange. But when you start giving out of your power, you realize that the person receiving can't give back. If you're a mom or a dad, you understand that when you buy shoes, you're exerting your power on your kids because your kids are not going to buy you shoes back. They're not going to. They're going to. They're not going to give you meal for meal. Matter of fact, uh, 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 when you add up all that you do for your kids, and maybe they grow up and do some for you, 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 what you did is still going to outweigh what they did for you because you showed your love through your power. All right? And so now tonight we're going to be talking about another part of, another part of, uh, 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 piece of power that you have to access that we don't access. All right? And the, this, this, this is a miracle working power and it's so easy, but, it's, but yet it's, it's kind of difficult at the same time. All right, let's go to the scriptures, Luke 5 and 17. I'm going to read out of the NIV today. Luke 5 and 17. We're looking for this power, man. We're getting ready to be operating in such anointing and power. It's going, it's, it's, oh! Uh, it, like my wife said, this place is shutting down. And a couple weeks later, they was they were boarding up the place. I was begging with her, 
like gods talking to gods. I was like, baby, please don't shut the place down. And she was like, no, I'm shutting this place down because of how they serve me my food in a toilet box. It has to come down. And I'm like, God to God, like in the spirit, I'm talking to her like, oh, I really believe that you have that power. Please stop it because where am I going to get my shrimp fondue? And she said, we're going to have to go somewhere else. But this place is shutting down. Three weeks later, we riding by and that junk shut down. Woo, you talk about people walking and now understanding what we walking in. Woo. All right. Here we go. All right. Verse 17. One day Jesus was teaching. I'm reading out of NIV. And the Pharisees and the teachers of the law were there, were sitting there. And they had come from every village of Galilee and from Judea and Jerusalem. And there's that word again, the power of the Lord was on Jesus to heal the sick. Now, what was the power of the Lord on Jesus to do what? Heal what? He, it, the power was on Jesus to heal the sick. All right. So now, verse 18, some men came carrying a paralyzed man on a mat and tried to take him into the house to lay him before Jesus. But they could not find a way to do this because of the crowd. They went up to the roof and lowered him on his mat through the tiles into the middle of the crowd right in front of Jesus. Watch this. When Jesus saw their faith, he said, friend, your sins are forgiven. Now how? Wait a minute. Hey, 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 okay, I, I get the sins are forgiven part. But man, I can't walk. What that got to do with it? Now, the power of the Lord was on Jesus to do what? Heal what? The sick. All right? And Jesus healed the sick by saying, your sins are forgiven. Huh? You're going to get in a, little, in a little bit. Stay with me. The Pharisees and the teachers of the law began thinking to themselves, how is this fellow who speaks blasphemy, who can forgive sins but God alone? And Jesus knew what they were thinking and asked, why are you thinking these things in your heart? Which is easier to say, your sins are forgiven? Or to say, get up and walk. But I want, but I want, check, check this out. But I want you to know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. So he said to the paralyzed man, I tell you, get up, take up your mat and go home. And immediately he stood up in front of them, took up what he had been. Now, okay. <laughs> All right. Immediately. Immediately, immediately, he took up in front of them, took what he had been laying on, and went home praising God. And everyone was amazed and gave God praise. And they were filled with awe and said, we have seen remarkable things today. All right, now let's go back. Let's extract all of the things that Jesus said to the Pharisees as if they were not there. Friends, uh, I'm at my verse 20, and Jesus saw their faith and he said, friend, your sins are forgiven. I tell you, take up your mat and go home. Wh where is the be healed word. Where, where is the where is the the spitting on the dirt? Where is the laying on of hands? It's not in this story. The healing was in 
the forgiveness. Uh, 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 come on, so Esso. Well, this this five dollars, but this represents five five million dollars that you borrowed from me. Okay, now now I want my money back now. I'm like I'm for real. I want my money back. After the skit, I want my money. Okay. No, let's not forget that part. Now, okay. So, so, so I just gave him five million dollars. <throat> the the time has passed. Now it's time for him to pay me back. I'm calling him. He won't pick up the phone. I'm, I'm going by to see him. He doing the best he can to get it back. Hit a little hard time. And now the worry is starting to stress him out. He owe me five million dollars. Now, trying to get that money back. His house got foreclosed on. His wife left him trying to get the money back. He can't get the money back to me. And I want my money back. And so I'm calling him, I'm chasing him. He's stressing out. Now he's sick. Now he's sick. Now he's sick. He ain't been sleeping. And so, I'm at the game one day. And I see him at the game. And I'm like, how in the world you got tickets to the game? And you ain't gave me my money. But the first thing. Now, now imagine when he sees me, what he thinking? Oh, Jesus. We're going to use Jesus today. And the first thing I say is, hey man, that money you owe me, you don't owe me no more. Do you understand the strength that he gets immediately in his bones and in his spirit when I as a man says your sins are forgiven? When I got the power to take everything you own by law, I walk up to you and say your sins are are forgiven. You don't owe me anything and you don't owe me no explanation. And, 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 and so when you, do, when you do that to people, usually people start to, don't, don't, get this, don't get this wrong, but really people start to praise and worship you. They start saying, man, man, God, bro, man, 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 thank you, Thank you, bro. Man, I just, I'm sorry, man, but I, you don't owe me no apology. Man, I'm, I'm, I'm because it's so grateful. It's almost, it's almost down the tears. That, that is the same praise that we give God. Because he didn't have to do it. Jesus says that the Son of Man has power to forgive. The most accessible power that man has is forgiveness. Woo! The easiest way to create a miracle is through forgiveness. Not the but he, but he, but she. You say, you know what? You don't owe me anything. I forgive. Now, when Jesus said to this man that your sins are forgiven, he was healed. That's how he could tell him to get up. <laughs> he couldn't tell him to get up if he wasn't healed. 
When he said your sins are forgiven, immediately he was healed. That's why he said get up. He can only tell him to get up if he was healed. And I'm telling you right now, that the easiest way to create miracles is through forgiveness. Now, that's when you kick in another scripture. Seed time, harvest shall not see. So when you create a miracle for somebody else, guess what you're going to get? I'm telling you how to access this miracle season that I'm getting ready to be in. I'm getting ready to be in houses I didn't build in, and I'm getting ready to drive cars I didn't. I didn't qualify for because I'm getting ready to start sowing miracles. Good God Almighty. Thank you, bro. And you can have the five dollars. Miracle. See that my first that was my first miracle. I just sold my first miracle. 